Now we want to move on to our second measure of position, which is percentiles. Percentiles are also a frequently used measure of position. So percentiles are the 99 values that divide an ordered data set into 100 equal parts. So there's a couple ways to interpret that. It's saying that a value such that k percent of the observations are less than or equal to p sub k. In other words, um, k percent of the data are at or below p sub k. And you'll notice the abbreviation P with a little K after it. P stands for percentile. K will stand for which percentile you're talking about. Okay, so I have a little picture drawn that will hopefully kind of help make the sense of this. So down here you have your minimum value, right? And then 1% of your data, so 1% of your scores fall there, and that's P sub 1. So it's the first value. And then you have a P sub 2. And then you have a P sub 3. Okay, so P sub 2, P sub 3, um, P sub 4, make that one narrow, P sub 5 right here. Now I'm not making them the same width because they're not. What I'm saying is that each one of them has 1% of the data values falling in there. So that's what makes it a percentile. So if you look at P5, 5% 5 is below that value. So at or below P sub K, right? I like that particular interpretation a lot, right? And then it keeps going, right? So you keep going and keep going and keep going. Eventually you'll hit, you know, 5, 10. I'm going to run out of space here. So let me just do P sub 25 right here, which would have 25% of the data below it. That's a percent sign. Or P sub 50, right? P sub 50, ah, that's the median, right? Which would have 50% below it. And then you keep going, keep going, right? 50, 51, 52, they're all in here. And then you end up here at P99, which has 99% of the data below it. And then you have the max, right? So this has 99% that way, right? At or below that value. This would have 50% below that value, at or below that value. All right, so that helps us kind of get a sense. There's 99 values, right, to separate your data into 100 pieces. So 1% here, 1% here, 1% here, 1% here, right, all the way up to 100%, right? So P99 is the last percentile. 99% of the data is at or below that value. And again, notice these are not all equally spaced. It's just that the percentage is equal. Right? So there's always 1% in between each one, but they're not evenly spaced. But do have equal percent, but do have 1% between each one. That's what makes it a percentile. All right, so let's do some interpretation pieces. So suppose your child is in the third percentile for weight. Is there cause for concern? And the answer is yes. Yes, that, that is a concern, right? This is one of the ways you see percentiles, is you'll see them if you have a child, you'll see them in the pediatrician's office, right? The child's doctor. So yes, there is cause for concern because the child is underweight. I mean, if you think about it, if you want to interpret this piece, interpret, what would we say? We would say 3% of children are at or below this child's weight. which anybody with a child knows that's not a good sign. Um, you don't want your child to be too small, unless there might be a, a reason for it, but there could be a sign that something's going on. Maybe your child's not processing food right, maybe your child is ill, maybe um, they're undernourished, etc. All right, now, there are places and times where your percentile versus your percentage is going to matter. So let's look at this carefully. Suppose you scored a raw score of 63% on an exam. But that means that you scored in the 84th percentile. Was this an easy exam or a difficult one? And did you score well or poorly? Hmm. 
So your raw score is 63%. But there are places, so for example, the nursing department, that it, they don't take your percentage. What they take is your percentile, right? In an, it's in a nationally normed test. So if the percentile is what matters, you're happy, right? This was a tough exam, right? So this was a difficult exam. Now, how do I know that? Well, it's because a score of 63, which is not really passing in many respects, because a score of 63% was a high percentile. Right? 84 means you did well, right? We you scored poor or you scored well. because 84% of test takers scored at or below 63, which was your score. Oop, gotta have that 63 thin in there, right? 63, so 84% of people scored below 63, right, at or below 63. which is another way you can say that it was a difficult test because 84% didn't even get up to 70, right? And 70% is normally passing. So this was a very difficult exam. Difficult exam, a low score was a high percentile. Right? This is a high percentile, that's a low score. All right, what if the opposite happens to you? What if you scored an 81? So you're like, oh, I did really well. Ah, but it was only the 59th percentile. Mm, okay, so if we think 84 is a high percentile, right, and 63 is low, right, what about here? That's a high score, you think, but if they're going to count the percentile, then mm, not so much, right? That was an easy exam because everybody's scoring really well. So you actually did not do that good in relation to the whole. Mm. So this was an easy exam perhaps a little too easy. Because a high score of 81% was only, or was, let me just say, was a low percentile. You didn't pass, right? And so if you want to think of, you know, I have to score in the 70th percentile or higher, you're not there. Even though you scored a higher than 70%, if they're going to count the percentile, that's not going to count for you, right? So this was a easy exam. You scored poorly. Because 59% of test takers were at or below. I'm going to do the same mistake I made above, above, at or below 81%. So if they're counting your percentiles, you didn't do very well. Right? 59 is not great. All right, now if you're thinking, hey, percentiles, right? I've seen these kinds of graphs before. Yes, percentile graphs often show up actually in exams. So you get SATs and ACTs back, they'll give you percentile graphs. And also on the charts in your doctor's office, there are percentile graphs for children's weights and heights and things like that. So that is an ogive, which we have seen before. An ogive comes from section 2.3. So this is a relative frequency ogive because these are percents. So that's why it's relative frequency, right? So it's percentile graph. So it's very common in doctor's offices. If you're going on in nursing, you will work with these types of graphs. Um, they get a little bit different, but the, the principle behind them is the same. All right, so we are gonna look at an OGI for the age and inaugurations of the US presidents as of 2020. All right, so uh, all the presidents <laughs> have been accounted for and their age when they were inaugurated is right here. All right, so an inaugurated is when they first became president. 
So President Obama was 47 when he was inaugurated. Um, approximately what percentile was he in? Okay, so a ruler can be helpful here to kind of help you figure out where to go. So let's see here. All right, so that's 45. So that is 47.5 because it's halfway between 45 and 50. Here, let me show you. So if I take parentheses 45 plus 50, close parentheses divided by 2, that's 47.5 right there. So that middle line right there, 47.5. So if he's 47, he's just a little bit to the left of that. So there's 47 right there. And we're going to go straight up to hit the graph. And then we'll go straight across. So try to make your lines as vertical and horizontal as you can. And you can see there's the 10 mark right there, that little line in there. And we're just a bit above that. So maybe like the 12th percentile, somewhere in there. Rulers can really help on this particular graph, right? So we will say he's about the 12th percentile. And again, rulers, very helpful for this kind of thing. It'll help keep you straight, um, vertical and straight horizontal as least as well as you can. And I'm going to put a little squiggly equals. That's an approximation sign because this isn't perfect. If you said about 10 or 11, you'd be fine. 20 would be too much, right? So you just want to kind of be in the relative ballpark. All right. Now, what about President Thomas Jefferson? All right. So Thomas Jefferson was in the 70th percentile for age. So he was kind of, um, oh, and for the record, when we want to interpret this, we want to say um, President Obama was a young president. Not that we're saying that 47 is young, but 47 is young amongst all presidents. So he's relatively young. All right, now President Thomas Jefferson is an older president because he's in the 70th percentile. So we can say right off the bat, President Thomas Jefferson was an older president. Right? 70% of presidents are at or below his age. Although we have to find his age. Whereas with President Obama, we can actually say about 12% of presidents are at or below 47 when inaugurated. I'm going to run out of space. <laughs> okay. All right, we still have to find President Thomas Jefferson's age, but we do know the interpretation here. We know he's older because he's in the 70th percentile, and so 70% of presidents are going to be younger than him when they're inaugurated, or at or below his age when they're inaugurated. But we still need to go find his age at inauguration. So we're going to take the 70. So right in here is the 70. So we're going to take a ruler, and we're going to go straight across, Oh, it's, it's extra cool if you have a nice marine ruler like mine. So 70 straight across, straight horizontal, and now straight vertical. You can actually go above or below because I put it on both sides. So you can kind of, I'll go above. It's fine. Right here. Because there's 55. So this is 57.5 right here. And he's about 59, 58, somewhere in there. You're, you're eyeballing it. So if you want to say like, oh, 58. Seems fine. As I recall, I think he was like 58 and a half, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. So, but I'll say he's about 58 years old. And again, I have the approximation sign in there because I'm eyeballing this. It's not perfect. Right? I don't have his you know, his actual age at this point, not from the graph, but I have a rough estimate that he was about 58, 59 years old. And that's how to interpret the ogive. That's how to use the ogive. And it's giving you those percentiles, which can help you interpret, well, in this case, whether they're young or old, right?